Hi everyone. This week I was playing around with color, especially granulating colors. And um, I was very excited after I did last week's demonstration of the desert scene using the uh, transparent brown oxide that I wanted to uh, experiment more with that color. And I found out that I actually had purchased transparent yellow oxide, they're both Daniel Smith colors, and I wanted to see how I could use these together with maybe another color that would create an interesting landscape. And I experimented with a number of colors and came up with the ultramarine turquoise. Now these all three are granulating colors. And I'm going to do a painting on 11 by 11 square hot press watercolor paper. I use Archer's hot press paper just because that's my favorite. This will also work on cold press paper by the way. Um, and here's my little test pieces. They're really tiny. And I love the way that these three colors have granulated together. I particularly like this one. So I'm going to do something very similar to that. Here again, they're just all three worked quite well. And I tried different colors in the sky. That one didn't work. This one is my favorite go-to color, the Blue Appetite Genuine. So I'm going to use that for the sky and the distant hills. But I'm going to do something like this for this painting. So I've mixed these three colors in a sort of thick, thickish creamy consistency. Um, I might thin them down even more because they need to run into each other. I don't normally mix my paints like that. I usually wet my brush and go into the paint straight out of the tube. I'm trying to actually mix my paints first, which is a new way of doing things for me. I'm going to have two thirds of the paper be the landscape and just one third be the sky. So. I'm going to have my little guide here and you see I think that that's still too thick. I want to um, water, have it wetter than that. So I'm learning myself um, how thick I need to do this. I'm going to cover the whole of the paper with this before we in introduce the other colors. One thing I was taught in art school, and I want to actually emphasize to you, is never to let your landscape run down off the page. It takes the eye right out of the picture. So if you're doing a hillside like this, you, also already, you always want to do a little dip up. If you don't do a dip up and you do it down, then at least have a distant hill that stops the eye from going out of the picture. I'm going to sort of start adding, oh, you see that's still too, way too um, thick. I want to actually start thinning that out. And this is where I'm going to just uh, keep everything spritzed. Now I'm going to introduce the turquoise and let that run down and it looks pretty bright now but when it mixes with these two colors it's going to tone it down I'm going to take my number 16 round brush and start adding a slightly thicker As I said, that because this is new to me, the way I've mixed the paint um, is not, it's not behaving the way I'm used to. But that's a good thing, that we learn new things even when you've been painting a long time. So, I actually should have turned this this way. Now, let's see, I want to have a few dashes of this color in the turquoise as well otherwise otherwise the turquoise is going to look out of place and then instead of spritzing it I'm just going to use my brush to to let this run 
run down. And I think I'll add a little bit more of the transparent yellow oxide and let that run. And the more you have this running, the more granulation you're going to get. Now, let me just wipe my edges so I don't get runbacks. There's some nice textures happening, really nice textures. And I think I'm, while it's still very wet, I just want to let this run down. Some more. And look at the te at the textures, the granulation starting here already. That's beautiful. I really, really like that. And I'm just going to run some through the brown oxide. I don't want to put too much turquoise in there because it's really it's going to look like it doesn't belong. I just want a, a little bit of it showing. Now actually I did not want this to get into the sky but I could always fix this later with my P.H. Martin's white. I just want to have a little more um, of this color running through each other and I want to leave some lighter areas too. Okay so I think we've got enough um, pattern going on here so I'm going to put this flat. Now that it's flat I'm going to take my um, sky color which is the Blue Appetite Genuine and I don't want any hard edges so I'm just going to make sure I don't get any there. And the trouble is when you're working wet and wet like this and you turn your painting up, the colour is going to run up. Now, I didn't want it to run up quite like that. Uh, once you start maneuvering the board around. So you have to keep being aware of that. I'm just going to add a, what we lost. I'm just going to add it back in there. When it's dry, I am going to put in a distant hill with the same color as the sky and we'll do maybe one, maybe three trees. We'll see. Now that it's dry, you can see it's dried quite a lot lighter and I like that. I like some light areas here. I'm going to put in the distant hill and then decide how many trees to put in and where to put them. So I've watered down the um, a Blue Appetite Genuine a lot to a very watery mix because I want really distant hills and I'm still getting used to using this color. I can always go over it if I've done it too light. That's going to dry nicely and that's about the right consistency. I don't like this white stripe in the sky so I'm going to try and just blend that in and get rid of it. That'll do that. Now the part comes deciding where to do the trees. So maybe I'll just reference my little um, 
picture. Maybe I'll do the biggest one here and do a couple of small ones there. And I've still got some of this yellow. I'm not going to worry about the from flow back into the sky earlier, but I'll, I can always fix that later. So I'm actually going to start off with my nib pen. I'm actually going to use some burnt umber for my trees mixed with a little bit of blue to darken it. Uh, I start off usually with something thin and then to get my shape and work from there. You get this far in a painting and then you don't want to to ruin it. So kind of like that. Now I can go in with my very thin brush. I'm going to just do a couple of small bushes just roughly here. Now I do want to ground these so I'm going to do a few roots and things. And I'm going to take my number one synthetic script brush and then start working on this. I'm making this one just a little bit thicker. You take your time over this because you don't want to get this far in your painting and then ruin it. These are little scraggly uh, trees or bushes. I haven't decided whether that tree is tall enough yet. I'm going to sit and look at it for a couple of days maybe. Let's put a mat around it. This is dry so I can put my clean mat around this. Let's just see. That'll kind of give me an idea. Um, I think Maybe this could be a little bigger. Um, I'm, because I'm uncertain, I'm going to wait a few days and then decide. I might also do, um, in the corner here, I might do a little bush like I did here in this little thumbnail. Could give the painting a little more interest. I love the granulation that, uh, that happened here. And remember that I always list the materials below the video. Just click on show more. And if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you next time.